Alright, what's up guys? Today I'll be breaking down my favorite subclass in the entire game, the new Stormcaller. I use this the entire way through Worlds First, that's how much I love it. And I think it's one of the better subclasses in the entire game. Maybe not necessarily the best, but it's definitely up there and it is very, very fun to use and it has a lot of different things going for it. So I'll be talking about just the abilities in general, then also the subclass in combo with exotics such as Chrono Tempest, then also the new one, the Geomag Stabilizers, which I'm going to be using my brother's account for this footage because he got them already. If you want to check him out, he actually streams on Twitch here and there, so I'm going to go ahead and link his Twitch down below in the description if you want to check him out. But anyways, the first part of the video, I'll be breaking these boots down. So when Chaos Reach Super Energy is almost full, Sprinting tops it off, damaging enemies with Chaos Reach extends its duration. Then he also has a few different perks that aren't the best, but I'm just going to show them off real quick. But basically, this is kind of like Crown of Tempest for the new path on Stormcaller, but not quite the same. So let's go ahead and break down the differences. So the first part of these boots is that when you're close to your super, Spurning tops it off. So as you see, once the bar got right around the middle of my 45 and my number count, it started topping it off. As you saw on the left side of the screen, the perk popped up, topping off Chaos Reach, and then it just quickly fills up the rest of the super. Now, the other part of it is doing damage with Chaos Reach extends its duration, so let's test that out first without the boots on on the Prestige Leviathan Castellum guys. Go ahead and get into position, then go ahead and use my super on this guy and see how long it lasts and also how much damage it does. So, start the timer, and it lasts for roughly 4.693 seconds and did roughly half its health so now doing the exact same thing, but now with the Geomag Stabilizers, which should extend the duration while I'm hitting them, which then will result in more damage. Start the timer again, and hit them, and see how long it lasts now. Now with this Exotic Boots, it now lasts 6.587, so breaking down how much longer that is, that is 40.3% longer, which also means you should do roughly 40.3% more damage. As you see, it takes them down to like 25-ish percent health, so that's a lot more damage. So now let's start breaking down some of the other perks on the subclass tree, then also some other exotics. So first, Ball Lightning, fire an arc projectile that travels forward and releases a perpendicular bolt of lightning. Then we have Pulse Wave, being critically wounded triggers an energy wave that boosts yours and ally speed. Finally, we have Ionic Trace, defeating enemies has a chance to create Ionic Traces. Collecting Ionic Traces grants energy to all of your abilities. So there's a lot going on in the skill tree, and then we're also going to be breaking down Chrono Tempest and combo with everything mentioned previously so crown of tempest if you don't know what it does arc ability kills increase the recharge rate of your arc abilities and extend the duration of storm trance now obviously we're not using storm trance so that second part of this exotic is no longer useful but the first part is so strong that it's still worth using with the new chaos reach super so let's start breaking this stuff down first thing i want to talk about is the melee ability which i see used incorrectly i think it's very underrated what i see most people doing is aiming straight at an enemy then pressing their melee and sending the beam straight at them, and that's not the correct way to use it. The way to use it is you want to put it above groups of enemies, then once it gets above them, it will send the bolt of lightning straight down and hit all of them at the same time, so it's basically like having two grenades. Speaking of grenades, which one should you be using? I use Pulse Grenade personally, but Storm Grenade is also very good. I mostly use Pulse because when the game first came out, it was by far the best grenade in the entire game, so I got used to it and how it works. But since then, they have buffed almost every grenade in the game, and they're way more balanced than they used to be, so you can make storm grenade work well for you and other things like that so just use whatever you like i personally like pulso now the next ability we're gonna break down is pulse wave which is basically tempered metal from top tree hammers on the titan subclass if you know what that is but this time it's now when you get critically wounded which means red health so i'm gonna let them hit me get red health and the second i get red health i can move faster which means sprint i can also jump higher and also reload faster then also swap weapons faster so there's a lot of stuff going on in pulse wave and it's actually very very useful in my opinion the one downside is the fact that you can't warlock skate as fast with pulse wave but in most of the cases when you need pulse wave to come in clutch like in-game activities the ability to change weapons reload faster then also sprint to get away from the danger faster can all save your life and the last ability to break down is ionic trace which is like the little beam of light on the ground after getting a kill then when you pick it up it gives you all of your abilities back or I should say a percent of all of your abilities back. So we're gonna go ahead and break down how much that is. So as you see, I got the kill, a little beam of light hits me, then I get roughly 20% of all my abilities back instantly. I'd say 20% is probably a good estimate of how much I'm getting back. And as I kill more and more things right here, you can see it's roughly like, I'd say one every five kills they drop one. So I could say the drop rate of it is also around 20% also. So when you're just generally killing enemies, once you kill like 15 to 20 enemies, you'll probably have like four or five 
of these things drop for you, which then will refill all of your abilities already. Now let's break down the Corona Tempest, and for me, this is where the subclass goes from really good to amazing. So if you don't know, Corona Tempest, getting an arc ability kill, reduces the cooldown of your arc abilities, and also your super on top of that. So what I'm going to do is test times 1, times 2, and times 3 because it stacks and see how much my abilities go up. So first, get rid of all my abilities with times 1 and you can see all three of the abilities come back. Then also my super bar move a little bit faster. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with times 2. So once again, use all my abilities. Then proc times 2, this time with my melee and grenade. And as you see, it lasts for 6 seconds or 7 I should say because 0 counts as a full second in the timer. And as you saw, I got actually a lot back just from times two. So finally, now do times three, and you can see how fast all my abilities move. It's actually very, very quick. Then also, my super bar moves extremely fast too, which I'm gonna go back and show that again here in a second so you can see how fast the super actually moves with times three. So once again, running it back, proc times three, and just look how fast my super bar moves in this seven seconds. It's almost as much as the Geomag stabilizers, but with Crown and Tempest. So as you can imagine, once you pair Crown and Tempest with Dionic Traces on the ground from kills, it gets silly very quick with how much uptime you have on all of your abilities and also your super, then just everything. You have all three abilities at all times. You have your super very, very quick with Crown and Tempest times three buff and all those things. As you see, just clearing this uh, Lost Sector ad clear up until the boss just once, I will already have my super before I even get into the boss room, which is like absurdly fast. Then as you get more accustomed to the way Crown and Tempest and the Ionic Traces work, you can start like comboing things and make sure you have all abilities up at all times. And it's kind of like a skill gap in a way of knowing how to rotate your abilities and also like how to work your grenade, how to work your melee to optimize like how many kills you're getting per use and also keeping your conduction times three up at all times. Then on top of all that, your super is one of the highest damage per second supers in the entire game, and that's not even with Geomax stabilizers. What you could do is run Crown and Tempest for your neutral game, which means like before you have your super just for all of your abilities and also getting your super quicker, then once you almost have your super, you can change the Geomax stabilizers, which then tops it off, then also makes it last for 40% longer. Overall, I would say the subclass is the most offensive subclass in the entire game. The only thing that comes close to me is the Blade Barrage on Hunter, but I would say this subclass has better abilities with Pulse Grenade, then also its melee is very strong too, then with Crown and Tempest having those abilities up more often, then also the ability to get your super quicker. Then, not to mention that your super itself is extremely strong, then you can actually make it better with Geomax Stabilizers. It truly has probably the best ad clear in the entire game, then also one of the better supers in the game. And just for those two reasons alone, it's definitely one of the better subclasses in the entire game, and definitely my favorite overall as a Warlock main. Obviously, I would still say Well of Radiance is better overall because of what it can do for your team and in-game activities, and just across the board with how flexible that subclass is. But Chaos Reach, along with the rest of the subclass, is easily the most offensive subclass in the entire game and I love it. The rest of the video will be going back and forth between Crown and Tempest gameplay then Geomag Stabilizer gameplay. I think in Pyramiding alone I got like five or six supers off with Crown and Tempest. That's how fast you get your super if you know what you're doing. I can't wait to have both of these exotics on my account myself. That way I can swap back and forth once I have my super, put on Geomag Stabilizers and get the bonus damage from that and swap back to Crown for neutral game and it's just a really really fun subclass. I love it. There's not much more I can say about it. Anyways, let me know what you think about Chaos Reach and the subclass, and also Crown of Tempest with it, then also Geomag Stabilizers if you have it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.
Those spikes usually mean incoming taken. Eyes up. Thank you. 